Welcome back to the channel guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use Redux in your React Native application. For me, starting out with Redux was really confusing. Like everyone, I started out by reading the documentation. Though the documentation is quite in-depth, it can soon get very overwhelming. Also, since Redux can be used with any JavaScript library, it does get a little confusing when you try and connect it to your React or React Native application. So in this video, I'm not going to be going into the technical jargon of Redux. I'll just create a simple React Native app that uses the internal state, and then we'll swap that state out to use Redux. In that process, I'll walk you through the basic concepts of Redux. Mind you, I'm not a pro at using Redux, but I'm sure by the end of this video, you'll understand the core concepts involved. So as always, to start out with, I have an empty React Native project in front of me that I've created with Expo, and I've opened it up in my favorite code editor, Visual Studio Code. So let's first start by installing our dependencies. So in your project folder, the first thing that we need is Redux. So we'll say npm install Redux. The next thing that we need is a library that will help us connect Redux to our React Native application. That's called React Redux. So we'll say npm install React Redux. After installing both of them, in case you get any error, just run npm install again and restart your Expo project and you should be good to go. So here I have some points regarding Redux that I'll get rid of for now. I'll walk you through them once we have a basic React Native application ready. So the application that we'll be creating is a basic counter application. All it allows us to do is increase and decrease a counter. So let's start creating that application. Here, let's get rid of this text. And instead of this, let's pass in a view, which has a flex direction of row. And inside this, we'll pass in our increase and decrease button with the counter. So for that, let's import in something known as touchable opacity and pass that in here. So we'll say touchable opacity. Inside that, it'll have a text which says increase. I'll just duplicate that and the other button will be decrease. I'll also pass in a text here, which will be the value of the counter. So let's say it's zero. Let's just style this a little, give this a width of 200 and justify content of space around. And I'll also just increase the font size. There, that looks much better. Now let's replace this counter with a state. So here we'll say state is equal to, let's call the property counter and give it a value of zero. Let's replace this with this dot state dot counter and the app still looks the same. Now let's put in the methods that we'll use to increase and decrease the counter. So in the touchable opacity, let's put in a non press that points to a method called increase counter. And here we'll put one which says decrease counter. Now let's go ahead and create these methods. So we'll say increase counter. We'll use the fat arrow functions and all we'll do is we'll say this dot set state. Update the counter to this dot state dot counter plus one. And similarly in the decrease counter, we'll say this dot state dot counter minus one. Now if we click the increase button, we see that the counter increases. And similarly, if we click the decrease button, we see the counter decreases. Obviously, the internal state of this application is not very complicated and you wouldn't need Redux for this, but it will help us understand the concepts of Redux very easily. Now, before we connect our app to Redux, we just need to format our code a little bit. Here in our project folder, let's create a new folder called source. And inside that, let's create a new file called counterapp.js. We'll basically move our code from the app.js into the counterapp.js and I'll tell you why we're doing that. Let's just rename our app to counter app. And in the app.js, let's get rid of this state here with the functions. And also let's get rid of this view here. Let's in turn import counter app from source slash counter app and pass it in here. The application still works. Just bear with me. You'll see why we did this. So let's get back to the notes I was talking about earlier. So what is Redux? Redux is just a better way of managing the state of your application. The way Redux does that is, is by storing the state of your application in one particular place. That one particular place is known as the store. 
Unlike a regular React Native application in which each component stores its own state, Redux, on the other hand, stores all the state in one particular place known as the store. So now we know that our state is stored in our store. How do we modify the state? The state can only be modified by something known as actions. However, the actions cannot directly modify the store. The actions must go through a reducer to modify the store. The reducer is nothing but a function that receives an action, modifies the state to give us a new state. You have to keep in mind here that the state is read only. That means that the state is only copied and modified and returned to us. The original state is not tampered with. Now we have a store. We have an action that can modify the store. The action goes to the reducer to modify the store. However, how does the action reach the reducer? The action reaches the reducer by something known as a dispatcher. So basically the action needs to be sent by someone to the reducer. That someone in our case will be an on press. So when we press on a button, we'll dispatch an action which will go to the reducer, modify the store and the reducer will return us an updated state. So let's start by creating our store. We can do that by importing create store from Redux. Coming here, let's say const store is equal to create store and save that out. You can name your store whatever you like, but by convention, it's named store. As you can see, we're getting an error here which says expected the reducer to be a function. So like I said, the store needs a reducer to be able to access it and modify the state. So let's pass in reducer here and let's create this reducer. So we'll say const reducer. It's going to be a function which currently doesn't return anything. And let's save that out. And now the error is gone. So we've created our reducer, but for the reducer to be able to modify the state, it needs to have access to the initial state. So let's create that. So we'll say const initial state is equal to counter and set that to zero. This is similar to the state that we create in a normal React Native app. Now let's pass that initial state as the first argument to the reducer. So we'll say state and set that to the initial state. So now we have our store. We have a reducer that can modify the store. But if you remember, I had told you that a reducer can only modify a store when an action is passed to it. For now, we won't pass any actions and we'll just return the state as it is. Let's now connect our store to our React Native app. To connect our store, we need to import something known as provider from React Redux. Now we can wrap our component with a provider and pass our store to it by saying store and pass the store. This is why we had refactored our app and moved it into its separate component because we need a root level component around which we can wrap our provider. This provider makes sure that this store is available throughout this app even if it has multiple components inside it. So though we've passed our store using the provider into our counter app, we don't have access to it inside the counter app just yet. For that, outside the counter class, what we need to do is we need to create a new function and we'll call the function map state to props, which takes an argument as the state. And here we'll use return and we'll say counter and set that to the state dot counter. All it's doing is it's getting the state dot counter from the store and mapping it to a prop called counter for this class. Next, we need to still connect this to our counter app because here, if we say this dot props dot counter, we'll still get nothing in front of us. So for that, let's import in something known as connect from React Redux. And coming down here at the bottom, where we export default counter app, instead of that, we'll say export default connect, pass in the map state to props, and then pass in the counter app in brackets. Once we save that out, you notice that here, this dot props dot counter is working. I know this doesn't look very intuitive, but all it's doing is it's connecting these props that we created to the counter app. So now that we're mapping our state from the store, we can get rid of the state inside this class. And we save that out. It's still working. So now it's time to pass in actions to modify this state. For that, 
we need to create another function here, which is map dispatch to props, which has a dispatch method available to it. And if we come here, I told you an action needs to be dispatched by someone, which will be done here in the counter app. So we'll say increase counter. It'll be a function which uses the dispatch method. And like I had said earlier, we're going to pass it an action, which is just objects with a property of type. So we'll say type and we'll say increase counter. Similarly, we'll create a decrease counter method and we'll dispatch it with an action of decrease count. Now we need to replace the this dot increase counter with this dot props dot increase counter and the decrease counter with this dot props dot decrease counter. And we can get rid of these methods here. Let's save that out. And if we test this, we see nothing is happening. That's because the action is being dispatched, but it's being dispatched to the reducer. Here in the reducer, we're not doing anything but just returning the state. So now comes the second argument of the reducer, which is the action. So the reducer takes a second argument of action and inside the reducer, we'll run a switch statement to check the action dot type. And if the case matches the type, which is either increase counter or decrease counter, we'll update the state. So if it's increase counter, we'll say return counter, which will be state dot counter plus one. And if it's decrease counter, we'll return counter, which will be state dot counter minus one. And if nothing is matched, we'll just return the state as it is. Let's save that out. And now if we click increase counter, we see that the counter is increasing. If we click decrease counter, we see the counter is decreasing. There's just one last thing I want to cover. And that is that all the functions in Redux must be pure functions. That is, that a function must always return the same result when the same arguments are passed to it. And it shouldn't utilize any variables that are not there inside that function or make any network requests that make sure that your state is consistent. We'll talk more about Redux in the future videos. This is a very simple application. I hope you guys try this out and please like and subscribe.